Hello and welcome to another episode of Wolf Sound Podcast. Today's topic is animal spirit guides. I'm also going to cover animal totems and power animals. I was uh, planning to record this on the 4th of February, uh, which was uh, two days ago, uh, to honor my pets and all the animals that I've met along my path and all of them really that the earth has been blessed with. But before recording, I knelt down to my beloved kitty. Her name was Jojo to check on her because she was only a few months shy of her 18th birthday and she's been frail in the past month. I knew she had to go and and she did that day. The world just had to wait as we said goodbye in her honor. I share this episode with all of you about our beloved animal guides, starting with an invocation. As I walk upon this earth, I am open to receive the guidance of spirit, knowing my spirit animals are here to protect me from harm. So every person is assigned an animal totem by by birthright. This is the animal that guides you and protects you throughout your life journey. Assigning an animal totem to to a person intensifies our depth beautifully. It offers insight and clues as to how we act, move, and what what our values are. It's also important to explore the shadow side uh, of of our spirit animals and totems uh, in order to, to, to understand ourselves on a much deeper level and understand each other. Just like humans, every animal has a light side and a dark side, although their dark side is, is not coming from a place of ego, obviously. Through their fears and instincts, we understand their motivations and vulnerabilities. Researching animals helps helps us map out um, it helps us map map out our set of character traits, beliefs, values, and lessons. Animals do guide us uh, and and give us tremendous va- tremendously valuable lessons that would help us in our lives. And when you're receptive to animal guidance, you enjoy their wisdom that can be easily applied in your life. As for spirit animals, they are available to anyone at any time. Once you know your animal totem, or if you want to understand your spirit and power animals, it's always great to watch them on Animal Planet and check for spirit animal websites. And shamanic teachings also offer valuable information on this topic. Before I get to the breakdown, I will share how my pets guided me through this life fulfilling their life purpose beautifully and left me forever changed. It was 2005 when I I was pretty lost in my own life. I uh, was uh, consistently trying to move countries. I wasn't settled, I never felt home. And then one day, Jojo and Fluffy just strutted into my life as rescue kitties they were in another home. They weren't treated very well. And I had promised somebody to keep them for three days until we find them a good home. And here I am, almost 18 years later. They're both gone. But I know they're with me forever. And I'm very grateful that I never let them go. After a few years of living with Jojo and Fluffy, Vincent came along in 2012, a Dalmatian dog, who chose to be with me. I I believe that all my animals were the ones who chose me. They're all rescue. And the way every encounter happened was pretty much orchestrated by them. I'm not sure how they know, but they definitely know a lot more than I do. Vincent walked in. And immediately I felt like he is my son and we took care of each other. 
for just under eight years. Jojo, Fluffy, and Vincent all passed away suddenly, although Vincent was the least expected because he was the youngest at the time. And these losses have, have caused me to literally drop to my knees. I just couldn't think or do anything. It just, it, I really fell apart. However, uh, a short while later, Polo came up, a Cocker Spaniel, who was desperately needing to find a home. He was alone. He wasn't, he, he was part of a family, but not living in the house. And he, he was so scared that he would just bite everybody. Eventually, I agreed to meet him, even though it was very difficult to accept another dog. But Polo was the one that actually helped me pull through the loss of Vincent. No dog replaces another. They each have their characters, and each of them have a, a certain lesson and a certain role in our lives. Amazingly, Polo ended up marrying Vincent's sister, a Dalmatian girl. Um, it, it was an accident and nobody was looking. They managed to get married and they had Snoopy Santiago, who is identical to Vincent. And call me crazy, but I believe Vincent came back in, in, in another form. They taught me lessons, life-saving moments, joy, love, peace, and pure bliss here on earth, and filled our home with beauty every living moment. So in honor of all these beautiful, amazing pets, I will share the breakdown of all kinds of animal totems and spirits and how they guide us. So animal totems, this is who you are in essence. It's your animal mirror. It watches over you and protects you. It is your advisor if you are open to listen. This is the only animal that is constant. My animal totem is the wolf. Here's a wolf quote. Be still and trust your intuition. Your song is heard. Some of the wolf's qualities are grace, strength, insight, wisdom, loyalty, and emotionally and consciously driven. In his shadow, a wolf is fierce, territorial, intimidating, a loner, and melancholic. One of my favorite prayers is a Native American one called Spirit of the Wolf. Spirit of the Wolf, you who wanders the wild lands, you who stalks in silent shadows, you who runs and leaps between the moss-covered trees, lend me your primal strength and the wisdom of your glowing eyes. Teach me to relentlessly track my desires and to stand in defense of those I love. Show me the hidden paths and the moonlit fields. Fierce spirit, walk with me in my solitude. Howl with me in my joy and guard me as I move through this world. The way I found out the wolf is my spirit animal was just a, a very strong intuition. It feels that I have, I can relate to the wolf, the, their life, the way they behave. And uh, they appear to me quite often in times of need. I always receive these guidance this guidance from the wolf and you can find your own animal totem by meditating every day and getting still but also intentionally call on your animal totem and it will appear to you but you just have to be completely still they talk all the time they appear to you all the time but the the question is are you connecting with with spirit are you connecting with them are you receptive to their messages or not. The other kind is spirit animal. These are the animals that seem to appear to you everywhere at a certain time. 
Your soul knows it needs their guidance. They get your attention through dreams, meditations, and make an appearance everywhere you look. Pay attention to understand what messages you need to receive about a current issue. Spirit animals keep appearing for you until you receive their message. You may have several spirit animals over a lifetime, and they may act as a signal that you're about to go through a transition in your life or act as a warning to not go down a certain path. Here's their timing. Spirit animals don't necessarily appear briefly during setbacks. They may appear when a time for a personal metamorphosis is called for. And when they disappear, it means that either their job is done or they felt offended by your dismissal. If you're not, it's not offended the, the way human beings get offended, but if you're not receptive to them, they will go away because you're, you're not paying attention. Everything lies in your attention. And if it's not there, then th the lesson disappears. Uh, they say, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. So if you're not ready, it will not appear to you. So if you're not receptive to them, they move on. They may return to you on more than one occasion with increased urgency. But if you continue to ignore them, they will eventually stop. Or some people spend their entire lifetime not being receptive to an, any kind of animal spirit. Not paying attention, lack of appreciation, and dismissal are acts of disrespect. Remember to offer them gratitude and blessings when they visit. Divine timing and intervention truly work in beautiful ways when they're open to when you're open to receive them. Animal spirit guides can also appear in human form. Your spirit animal can be human being. We're animals too. Have you ever encountered a stranger? who came to, you, to your aid and then suddenly disappeared, never to be seen again? Have you had a conversation at the most opportune moment that saved you from mental anguish? These are our human angels acting as guides. Human spirit guides make themselves known through chance encounters, an unexpected call from a friend in a moment of need, a dream. It is truly a gift to have animal guides walk with you on the path. Let them guide you through your darkest hours and remain receptive to their divine wisdom. I'll give you an example of an animal spirit. So again, they appear to you in very specific times. For example, if, if you're about to go through tremendous change and growth, you might see a lot of butterflies. Uh, when you see the same animal over and over again, then look them up. There are great websites. There is spirit-animals.com. This is one of my favorite ones. A giraffe can, there, the giraffe message can, can be a sign that you need to look at the big picture and, and not get stuck in, in something that's eating away at your attention that might not be good for you. So you need to see more because maybe someone is trying to hide something. For me, the um, spirit one of the spirit animals that appeared was the kangaroo. During a five-day intensive ayahuasca ceremony, we were given an option on the third day to drink the daimi as we take a long walk through the forest. And of course, naturally, I'm I'm actually a couch potato, uh, especially in in certain settings. Um, but that day I decided to welcome something new. So I was there to change my patterns. And my father had been deceased a year and 40 days prior. He appeared during the entire ceremony and walked beside me that day. And on our walk, and while we're in deep conversation, I hear the trees whisper. I look to my right. And a kangaroo was hopping away in the heart of a Dutch forest. Little did I know, kangaroos are not to be found in the Netherlands. This was an animal spirit here to tell me, don't look back. It's time to move forward towards your future.
another one that appeared um, was a snake. And uh, snakes appeared to me in two in instances. Um, one was as a warning and the other for healing. Many kinds of snakes are venomous, which is why they become this, they became the symbol of healing. And, and it's even a common logo for pharmacies. Poison has often been used as medicine. As an ancient adage goes, the poison that kills becomes the elixir of life when used by the wise. Snakes are revered in shamanic medicine just the same, as they often make an appearance during inner visions and journeys of spiritual ceremonies. It is time to take your bitter medicine because it is time to let go, the snake said. So my first encounter with snakes was during an ayahuasca ceremony when I was going through a process of a very specific traumatic event in my past. That event had to do with my late father's wife. I had a strong intuition that she murdered him, and as a result of that, along with all the pain she had caused, I harbored deep-seated anger and grief. This was the same ceremony um, uh, where I, that was the very first one um, in my life, and where the same one I saw the kangaroo in. So Mother Ayahuasca is a female mother figure that we often see in the visions. This particular day was quite intense. It took 12 hours of processing emotional and physical hell. I learned that we get punished by our own emotions, and my task was to release my anger and grief. Emotions turned into snakes, twisting around, and my hair turned into Medusa style. The purging was intense, and when I looked into my bucket, it was filled with all the snakes I had to purge. So... I can be uh, released from the toxic bond I had with this woman. When the ceremony was finally over, I could barely maintain my balance. I asked others how crazy they think it was to purge snakes. They laughed because the snakes were, were we encounter in, in a vision do not manifest, obviously, in the three-dimensional world. Many see them independently, but we cannot share the same vision. After this ceremony, I have felt such deep gratitude I have never felt before and understood what forgiveness truly means. We absolutely must release toxic emotions for our own sake. What a miracle it is that we can stand on our two feet carrying all this emotional baggage. It is truly a, mir a miracle. And I realize that this may sound scary to some, um, but isn't life about sometimes like we grow the most through challenging times and and scary things and we we only get to fortify ourselves whether it's through pain trauma or losses it is kind of a rite of passage so the second occasion uh it was it was in in a dream like there was this recurring dream with the cobra trying to to eat my legs and um at the time i was in an extremely toxic relationship and and in the dream i knew that snake it represented him and the snake was um malicious and manipulative and uh, i was sleeping next to vincent my dog and he woke up as if he could see my dream. And I woke up that day and I completely freed myself from that relationship. I learned that nothing is worth it, worth wasting a moment of your life over. No relationship is worth your mental health. And to have your animal guides so gently and kindly guide you to, to well-being all all around is truly a blessing you don't want to miss out on. I also have been blessed with many human angels along the path. Some were strangers and some were old friends. These are the ones that helped me regain my faith in humanity. A stranger saved me from being stranded at an airport after being conned by someone I knew. 
him and his friend, um, the one the one who conned me, uh, they gave me a fake plane ticket and saw, stole all my cash and bank cards, and it was the weekend. So this kind stranger offered to get me a ticket with his miles, trusting I would pay him once I got home, which I did. So what what happened here is that we both helped restore like the trust and integrity and and some restored the faith in humanity for each other another time i was in london and the place i was supposed to stay at fell through and it, it was winter time i was on this in the street on camden town at four in the morning trying to find a hotel to stay at i went to a 24-hour internet cafe to look up bookings when an old friend i haven't seen uh, for a long time or been in contact with sent me a random Facebook message asking if I'm okay and extended help. He told me he had he heard this call that he needed to get in touch with me to reach out and to just check if if I needed anything. These little moments when we listen, when we listen to them, the way uh, there, there, it creates beautiful moments between people and between people and animals. It, it truly does add to the collective kindness that we miss so much. And there are so many other, um, so many, so many other instances. Now the, now for you to see the spirit animals, it could be. Um, you can see the same animal over and over in everywhere, like not just on social media. Um, you can see them on social media. You can see them in a book. Uh, somebody mentions the, the animal. You watch a random movie and there's the animal. You see the words that that name that animal. There's so many ways you can. You, and I'm, I'm sure you've it happened to you before, like, oh my God, I'm seeing elephants everywhere all of a sudden. When that happens... Just look them up and see what they mean and then see what you're going through in in your life. And trust me, you will not you will never regret listening to what they have to say. Just take it as a sign, whether it's a warning or something positive coming, you still need to be receptive and alert to it. Now, the third is the power animal. And this is the animal you intentionally invoke through meditation incantations and so on and in a, in a time of need so you get to choose your power animal uh, based on your need of a particular power so they can be animals or people the specific friend you turn to for guidance will vary based on all uh, that's interesting my dogs are barking um, based on the nature of that guidance uh, so uh, who we choose is determined by their support uh, capacity in a particular situation. The one you call in an emergency may be different from the friend you call after a breakup. They do not always have to be someone familiar. Many times I would call upon the energy of a stranger I admire when I need help with grounding, confidence, or peace. Many inspire us to defy our fears, motivate us to be better, and, and help us remember our inherent worth. So a lot of times I would, I would um, call on a, a very particular animal um, if, if I need strength and more grounding. I, I look up the animal or I get naturally inspired by a certain animal and and I call upon them in, in meditation and then they appear. Um, and also you can, if you feel like, like, for example, I learned how to set boundaries in my life by watching uh, three uh, of the closest people around me. They have incredible way they they apply their boundaries. They have boundaries with everything and um, or almost everything. And the way they they set these boundaries are so it's so graceful it's so almost they make it look easy and um it took me years actually to learn this and it's incredible if it wasn't for the opportunity to 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 be their student even just by observation um and sometimes even asking questions 
it, it's really a tremendous, tremendous gift to be able to learn from everyone and everything around us. Now, the shadow animals, our shadow animal spirit uh, represent the dark side of our personality. Using the your shadow animal offers deeper insight into your behavior in times of darkness. So, um, for example, I used to I used to teach a lot about animal spirits and and uh, the shadow animal to help actors approach a certain role. Uh, to, to it serves them quite well to grasp their shadow animal and not just to settle for the light side of the animal. This applies to the characters that mostly uh, are mostly good or heroic, and um, and if the character is mostly dark, then you still need to see the light side so that you have a well-rounded, authentic character, and not a caricature. So, considering you already settled on your animal totem, uh, separate its good qualities from its negative qualities. Um, at first so that you understand it fully and then you figure out a, a way to integrate. Um, so let's take the, the wolf as an example. In its power and light, the wolf is a leader, a great communicator in tune with his song and a ferocious protector of his pack and territory. In his shadow, he can be vicious when cornered, a loner, melancholic and broken. Observing the animal totem closely will help you with embodying it and with understanding yourself better. So here's a tip. Your instinct is the most reliable source to know what your animal totem is. But if you're not in tune with your intuition yet, then you can have try this exercise. Write down your most significant characteristics. Then Google one at a time by asking which animals are, for example, nocturnal, which animals are uh, the kindest, which animals are most psychopathic, which animals are the most joyful or loyal. You will always get a long list of animals that meet one characteristics, but as you go through them, the list will keep narrowing down the results. So um, you will see the same animal crop up. But my preferred method is just to strengthen your intuition by meditating every day and connecting every day. And, and that's, you, you will just know. You, you'll know when you know. Um, and knowing your, your animal totem and spirit guides, and the key word here is knowing. So tap into your inner knowing and you will intuitively have the answer. Here are a few prompting questions for animal totems. When I look at my characteristics, which animal do I resemble the most? Which animal have I always sensed a deep connection with and felt is always protecting me spiritually? Which animal do I feel deep sense of inexplicable familiarity with? So you don't have to answer just ask these questions before bed or before meditation and and the answers will come to you so the only animal that you would need that like you need this exercise for is your animal totem but the others the spirit animal is easy you're just gonna show up everywhere at certain times and then leave and then another time maybe another animal shows up as your spirit animal for that particular time and then the power animal you call on intentionally when you need a certain characteristics from them or certain guidance. So um, here's some, I'll, I'll add some helpful tips. Uh, again, uh, strengthen your intuition through daily meditation. And in a meditative state, think of the animal guide you need. You can say, I'm open to receive guidance from my spirit animals. Avoid alcohol and drug consumptions in in a time in times of turmoil, and meditate before bed and and ask to be guided. Become aware of your surroundings; they make uh they make appearances in the oddest of places. They can appear in a painting, a social media, as I said, uh, an old birthday card, and. They make uh they make they may make their presence known through other senses. You may hear them, 
as you do a hummingbird, an owl, or a wolf howling, especially if they don't inhabit your area. You may smell them, uh, feel a taste in your mouth that triggers a memory of a certain animal, plant, or possibly a human, to each their own. I'm not here to judge. Animal sounds are tremendously healing, by the way. The purring of a cat on your tummy emits healing vibrations as it, as it helps circulate and your, renew your energy. And it releases sadness. The wolf's howl is a reminder of your inner power demonstrated with beauty, melancholy, and inspires effective communication. A hummingbird in the Egyptian culture offers hope that your prayers and wishes are being heard and answered. So I will um, leave you with this. And uh, uh, here's a little prayer. May you walk safely upon the earth, knowing your guides are protecting you. This episode was in honor and loving memory of Fluffy, Vincent, and Jojo. And in honor of, bless them, my other pets, Snoopy, Santiago, Polo, Salvador, Lishka, Coco, Spongel. And, um, and it's for all of you and all my lovely friends and family. Um, I, in the, I will record some more episodes uh, soon. Uh, it will be every weekend that I record so that I can upload to, during the week, still managing my mm -hmm. time. Um, and uh, I, I'm thinking of um, of having, if, if you want to hear about a specific animal, I'm, I'm happy to share that. But I think I will start also soon with um, uh, cats and dogs and then move on to other animals. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I uh, hope you are always divinely guided and to fulfill your calling and everything that your heart desires. Uh, thank you for listening and I'll see you or talk to you in the next episode. Thanks. <laughs>